How to install and configure tools on a Jenkins agent. If you are using Kubernetes for your agents, usually what you'll do is you'll create a pod template and use specific images within that pod template that only have a single tool. However, if you're not to the point of using Kubernetes for your agents yet, you might still be using a container runtime such as Docker to run your container images. When you're creating images for use within a container runtime, then you're probably creating a kitchen sink image or an image that has many tools in it. But what if you're not even to a container runtime yet? What if you're still using bare metal or VMs? In this video, we're going to look at a couple of different ways that you can install tools on that agent and then configure your pipeline to use those tools. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. Now, if you're using a Windows-based agent, the processes will be a little bit different, but you should see the similarities in what I'm doing. First off, I want to go ahead and create a job that's going to set us up for the rest of this video. So we'll go ahead and go into new item. I'm going to say test tool. I'm going to create a pipeline job and click OK. Within that job, I'm first going to select the hello world. And then let's go ahead and change this first one to Python. And within this first step, I'm going to say sh. And I'm going to say Python. 3-V. So the only output that we're going to get is the version of Python from this agent. Let's go ahead and click on Save and click on Build Now. What we're going to see from the output of this job is we connected up to Agent 1, which is our agent. We ran Python 3-Upper V, and we can see here that Python 3, the command, is not found. So let's go ahead and go over to our agent and install Python 3. Now, for most cases, if I'm using Python, I probably want the Python 3 package as well as the Python 3 devel package. So I'm inside of the agent. I'm logged in as a user. So who am I? So I'm just a user. I'm not root. Now, in the case of installing Python, I need to be able to either be root or have sudo privileges to install the Python 3 package. Now, in my case, I have sudo privileges. So I'm going to say sudo dnf install python3, and I'm also installing the python 3 devel package. Let's go ahead and hit enter. We'll go ahead and hit yes. Okay, the package has been installed. Let's go ahead and from the command line here, we'll type python3-v, the command that we're going to run within our pipeline. We can see that we're getting back python 3.6.8. Let's go ahead and go back over into our controller. We'll click on test tool again and click on build now. If we take a look at the output of number two, what we're going to see is that the output from Python 3-V is the same as what we just saw from the command line, Python 3.6.8. So that's one of the first ways that you can install tools on your agent. Use a package manager that's native to that operating system. I was on Alma Linux, so DNF or YUM would work there. If I was on a Debian-based operating system, I'd use APT. If I was on Windows, I might use WinGet. If I was on Mac, I might use Brew. So depending on what type of operating system you're on, if there's a package manager available for that operating system, use the package manager and then check and see if the binary that you're wanting to install is available through that package manager. Now, moving on to the next example, what if I've got a package manager, in my case DNF, but the package that I'm wanting to install does not exist? So how do I go about doing that? In my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find the binary for this operating system, download it, extract it, and then use it. So for this example, I'm going to be downloading a binary called Hugo. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and create a directory within my agent where that binary can be placed. So if we go ahead and go back over, I am still vagrant. I am not root. So I'm running as the user. In the configuration connecting to this agent, I am connected up as this vagrant user. So let's go ahead and create the directory that I want to have. So I'm saying make dir p home tools Hugo. In my case, I really like being able to have all of my tools that I'm managing this way inside of a tools directory. You might have a different way to name yours. This is the way I like mine. After that, I go ahead and put in the name of whatever the program is. In this case, it's Hugo. Now, fortunately for me, Hugo is available from GitHub and they also package releases. So if I go into releases, I can see the most recent version at the time of recording is 122.0. So if I click into this, and I scroll down, what I'll see is I'll see the number of assets. And since I'm on Linux AMD 64, I'm going to pick this version, Hugo Extended 01220 Linux AMD 64 tar.gz. 
In your case, you might be running on a Debian-based. Well, there's a deb available for that, so I could download the deb and then use apt to install the deb. But since there's not an RPM here that I can use, then I'm going to download the targdz, extract it, and then I'm going to put Hugo on the path for the agent. Now for this first example, 122 is the latest, but I actually want to go back and install 121. So if I click on releases, I'll go back to just the zero version of 121. And what I'll see here is that the assets are actually collapsed. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install, just like what I'm planning to do for 122, I'm gonna install the 121 version. So let's go ahead and go back over to the agent. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a 121 directory. So again, I have a tools directory. I create a directory for whatever the binary is, in this case, it's Hugo. And then within that, I'm creating the version of where the binary is. So I'll go ahead and create that directory. Let's go ahead and CD into that directory. And then I'm going to go ahead and download the 121 version of Hugo. Now that that's downloaded, we'll go ahead and extract it. So now if we look inside of this directory, we have the targz, which I'll go ahead and get rid of. So then in the end, I'm left with the Hugo binary, license and readme. So if I was to go ahead and type in Hugo space version, what we'll see is I have version 121 of Hugo. But at this point, notice how I ran that binary. I had to do a dot slash. So if I was to go back over to my Jenkins pipeline, add in a stage to call the Hugo version, it's not gonna be able to find it. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go back into our pipeline. Let's go ahead and click on configure. Let's add in a new stage. This stage we'll call Hugo steps, then sh Hugo version. Let's go ahead and click on save and click on build now. What we'll see from the output of number three, just like we were mentioning, Python is good, but notice when we say Hugo version, Hugo is not found. It's on the file system, but we haven't added it to the path yet. Now we have a couple of different ways that we could do this. We could go ahead and put it on the path on the agent. So that way, even when we're on our agent, just sitting here in a different directory, we'll go back to our home directory. If I type Hugo version, notice that Hugo is not found. And that's to be expected because we haven't even put Hugo on the path. But let's say for a moment that I don't want to make any changes to my path directly on the agent. Let's go into our agent configuration within Jenkins and change how we access that binary. So we'll go back up to dashboard, click on agent one. Let's click on configure. We'll go down to the node properties and select environment variables. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add an environment variable, but notice how I'm going to add this. Under the help for environment variables, Jenkins supports a special syntax base plus extra. So the example makes it a lot clearer. I can say path plus local bin and just give it this value and Jenkins will take that value and drop it into the path on the agent so I can be able to access files within that specific directory. So how am I gonna do that for this? Let's go ahead and click on add. I'm going to say path plus Hugo underscore bin. So the path to the binary for Hugo. And in the value, I give it the fully qualified path to the directory, in our case 0.121.0, of where the Hugo binary lives. So let's go ahead and click on save. Let's go ahead and go back over to our job, click on test tool, click build. If we take a look at the output of four, we can see it was successful. We can see Hugo version came back with 0.121.0. Now let's take this one step further. Let's assume that I want to be able to have multiple versions of Hugo on my agent, and I want to be able to access that from within my pipeline. So how do we go ahead and do that? Well, let's go ahead and go back into our agent and let's remove that environment variable that we just added. So we'll go to the bottom, we will get rid of the environment variable, and we will uncheck it and click Save. Just to validate that that's gone, let's go ahead and go back to Dashboard. Let's run this job, take a look at the output of five, and we can see that Hugo is no longer found, exactly what we expected. Now let's go back over to our agent. I'm wanting to download the version 122. So since I'm in my home directory, Let's go ahead and create the new 0.122.0 directory. We're leaving 121 on there because I still want 121, but I'm also getting ready to test out 122. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here. Let's CD into the 122 directory so we can download the binary for 122. We'll go ahead and do a wget for that targz for 122. And then let's go ahead and extract it. We can see everything's been extracted. Let's go ahead and remove our targz and verify all we have left is our Hugo binary, the license, and the readme. Now again, if I was to run the job right now, then what we're going to see is Hugo is not found. 
Let's modify our job. Let's create an environment variable. We're going to create an environment variable. We're going to name it Hugo Bin. We're going to give our fully qualified path, much like what we did in the environment variable within the agent configuration. And the one other change that we're going to make is in our step, what we're going to say is we're going to say dollar sign Hugo underscore Bin slash, much like what we would do if we were running locally on the agent. Let's go ahead and click Save. Now notice we've also defined 121. We'll click Save, click on Build Now. If we take a look at the output of number six, we can see we're back to 121, Hugo 121. But let's say now we're ready to go ahead and make the change within our pipeline to use 122. So we'll go back into our pipeline, configure it, change our Hugo Bin environment variable from 121 to 122, click Save, click Build Now, and when we take a look at the output for number seven, we can see that we're now running Hugo 122. Now in this example, I did everything by hand. Is that the best way to do things? Probably not. You may want to script these installations instead of doing it by hand, or using a tool such as Ansible to manage these installations for you on either your bare metal servers or your VMs. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.